when we meditate, it's a meritorious activity. Although we may not like the, the word merit, replace it with the word goodness. We're doing something good. It comes from the goodness of the heart. Because we're looking for happiness in a way that's harmless. Harmless to ourselves and harmless to other people. That's one of the aspects of goodness, is that it breaks down the barriers between us and others. And so as we practice, we're basically showing that we have some faith in goodness. That it's not for nothing, that it's actually something that really exists. When the Buddha explained karma, the first things he pointed to were generosity and gratitude. Basic, basic forms of goodness. The implication being, if you have faith in goodness, you should have faith in the principle that we do have choices. And the choices to, will give results depending on the quality of the motivation behind the choice. When we talk about having faith in the principle of karma or conviction in the principle of karma, it sounds rather dry and theoretical. But if you think of it as faith in goodness, it gives you a better idea of how you should relate to it. We have this power within us to do good. and to act on motives that are selfless, not in the sense that we would harm ourselves, but we're willing to give. And we find it ennobling. There are times when it may be difficult to give. But by overcoming the difficulty, we find that we're stronger, and we have more respect for ourselves. So when you engage in the meditation that's meritorious, the Buddha focuses on the Brahma-viharas, and particularly the Brahma-vihara of goodwill. But goodwill includes compassion and it includes empathetic joy. You see people who are suffering or creating the cause of first suffering, and you don't just leave them. You say, well, they have to deserve to suffer. You have compassion. May they find some way of ending their suffering. And if there's anything that you can do to help, you're happy to help. With empathetic joy, people are happy. We're creating the causes of happiness, and you're happy for them. You don't resent their happiness. You're not envious of it. After all, when you have goodwill for beings, you want them to be happy. Well, this is what happiness looks like. And you want to be fair. You don't want to have to depend on your likes or dislikes. The same with your compassion. Compassion for all those who are acting in miserable ways, all those who are doing miserable things. Seeing that they're digging a hole for themselves. And feeling compassion for their desire for happiness. Because that's what it comes down to, goodness. Realizing that we want happiness, other beings want happiness. 
sometimes they can be very misguided and very confused about how to find it. But there is that spark that we all have in common. Just as we have suffering in common. We can't feel other beings suffering. Sometimes we can see the signs and we can empathize. But we have to assume that when they suffer it hurts just as much as when we suffer. When there's part of your mind that feels pain by that realization, that's when you develop the, the heart, the good heart that wants to develop goodness. In other words, finding happiness in a way that doesn't cause any pain to anybody, doesn't cause any harm. The happiness that erases boundaries and creates a connection. Now, there are some people, of course, whose behavior is such that you may not want to be connected with them, but at least have sympathy. To whatever extent they're doing unskillful things, they're suffering. And in some cases, the, the best course of action is to wish them well, but to realize that your ways are going to have to go separate ways. That's why the Brahma Viharas have equanimity as well. You think of all the many, many lifetimes we've been through, and all the unresolved relationships we've had. It's very rare that a relationship comes to good closure. They end abruptly, then they start abruptly. And in the meantime, sometimes there can be some very harmful, very painful things that happen. And they never get resolved. And you have to accept the fact that that's the way it is in samsara. That's the way it is with this wandering on. When you read history, what you read is basically a lot of missed opportunities. And that's the way it is with a lot of relationships, missed opportunities. And you have to accept the fact that that's the way things are. Because there's work to be done. The Buddha says when you're experiencing grief, you allow it as its expression, to whatever extent you feel that it's accomplishing something to express your grief. But then there comes a point you realize you have work you have to do. The work, of course, is straightening out your own mind, realizing that if you don't straighten it out, you're setting yourself up for a lot of many, many more lifetimes of just the same sort of thing. So express your grief to whatever extent you feel is useful. Make merit for those who have passed away. And then remember, this is the way it's going to be, as long as you haven't pulled that arrow out of your own heart. You're going to be a victim of a lot more arrows. And the good thing is, is as you develop more good qualities in the mind that are your strength, that provide the path away from all the sorrows that we usually experience, you find that you have more goodness to share. And so you're willing to dedicate it to all those in the past who have wronged you, all those who have wronged.
That way, as you leave the world, you leave a lot of good behind. And that's something of which you can be proud. That's a genuine basis for self-esteem. <laughs>